Fifty plus free real estate practice exam questions. Two thousand and twenty-two. This free practice exam is here to help you master the national portion of the real estate exam. Our real estate practice exam pulls from a large pool of questions, so you can expect a different study experience each time you take it. Don't forget to read the explanations so you fully understand the question. At the very end of each exam, there is a recap of the questions you got right or wrong, which is also very helpful to look at. Question fifty-one: Which of the following would not be considered real property? A. A fixture. B. An easement. C. Mineral rights. D. A mortgage. Answer D. Fixtures, easements, and mineral rights are all examples of real property. A mortgage is not. Real property is all things attached to the land and all the legal rights to it. Real property is usually things that are immovable, such as the home itself or the buildings within the property line. There are some exceptions of items that can be moved, but are still real property, like for businesses. Business-related items like mineral rights, or if you owned a farming business, it would include crops, barns, and stables. Those are all considered real property because it is part of the business. Question two: A mortgage loan that requires monthly payments of four hundred thousand dollars for fifteen years and a final payment of twenty thousand dollars, typically a loan structure like is called a, a a balloon loan, b a payday loan, c A standard loan, D. A home equity loan. Answer A. A balloon loan is a mortgage which does not fully amortize over the term. Amortization is when payments divide into equal amounts for the duration of the loan. A balloon loan is different as not all payments are equally divided, and the most substantial payments are called balloon payments. A common example of a balloon loan is the seven-year Fannie Mae balloon, which features monthly payments based on a thirty-year mortgage, making the rate of payments much lower. At the end of seven years, the rest of the loan is due. This last payment is called a balloon payment because of its large size. At that point, the borrower may sell the home to cover the balloon payment, or take out a new loan to cover the payment, effectively refinancing the mortgage. Question three: Mr. J lives on a property right next to a bridge. The state wants to widen the bridge due to the higher amounts of traffic reported. The state needs the space on either side of the bridge to widen the road. The government sizes Mr. Johnson property and gives him one hundred fifty thousand dollars for it. This government's right to take over privately owned real for public use is an example of a a street, b a minion domain, c adverse possession, d inverse condemnation. Answer B. Eminent domain is the government's constitutional right to take over privately owned real for public use, usually despite the owner's wishes. Eminent domain for the federal government is protected under the Fifth 
Amendment of the Constitution. Why for state governments it is protected under the Fourteenth Amendment? Mr. Jay's example is an example of eminent domain. Question four. Appraiser Larry has a set of special-purpose and public service buildings, like schools, churches, and post offices, which he needs to appraise. Which approach to value would Larry, the appraiser, choose to complete the task? A. Cost approach. B. Estate approach. C. Income approach or summation. D. Market data approach or sales comparison approach. Answer A. For special purpose and public service buildings like schools, churches, and post offices, the cost approach is the best choice. The reasoning is because these types of buildings usually do not have income, so income abroad is out, and there's not enough comparables to do the sales comparison abroad. Cost abroad is the best answer. Question five: What is the difference between a lease option contract and lease purchase contract? A A lease option contract and lease purchase contract are the same thing. B. The difference between a lease option and a lease purchase agreement is that the lease option only obligates the seller to sell. C. The difference between a lease option and a lease purchase agreement is that the lease option only obligates the buyer to buy. D. The difference between a lease option and a lease purchase agreement is that one is for first-time home buyers and the second is for any type of buyer. Answer B. The difference between a lease option and lease purchase agreement is that the lease option only obligates the seller to sell. With a lease option, the buyer is not forced to buy the property if they change their mind or cannot obtain financing. A lease purchase agreement commits. Both parties to the sale bearing breach of contract or the buyer's inability to secure a mortgage. Question fifty six: When contracting parties have signed a contract and both parties have done all they promised to do, it is called this: a an executed contract, b an express contract, c an implied contract. D an option contract. Answer A. When contracting parties have signed a contract and both parties have done all they promised to do, it is called an executed contract or executed agreement. It's worth noting. Most real estate transactions require execution. A sales contract, for example, is executed when the seller has transferred title to the buyer and the buyer has paid the seller. Execution must occur to finalize the agreement. Without execution, a transaction is incomplete and therefore doesn't exist. Question seven. Enacted in 1974, which of the following is a regulation that aims to give all legal individuals an equal opportunity to apply for loans? A. Fair Housing Act. B. Credit Consumer Act (CCA). C. Civil Rights Act. D. Equal Credit Opportunity Act (ECOA). Answer D. Equal Credit Opportunity Act (ECOA) 
is a regulation that aims to give all legal individuals an equal opportunity to apply for loans. The Act prohibits creditors and lenders from considering a consumer's race, color, national origin, sex, religion, or marital status in deciding whether to approve their credit application. This Act protects consumers from being wrongfully discriminated. No matter what type a person applies for a loan, they cannot be turned away due to factors that are not directly related to their credit. Question 8. Which of the following consumers would most likely qualify and be able to derive the most benefit from a reverse mortgage? A. A young homeowner with a low credit score whose property is free of any income prices. B. A young couple who wants to own a house but doesn't have a high enough credit to qualify yet. C. A middle-aged couple with high credit whose mortgage loan has a higher interest rate than the current rate for new loans. D. A couple in their late 60s who need to tap their home equity to help cover their expenses but do not want to sell their house. Answer D. Reverse mortgage can provide much needed cash for seniors whose net worth is mostly tied up in the value of their home. In this instance, age does in fact matter you must be at least 62 years or older to qualify for reverse mortgage. There is no minimum credit score requirement for a reverse mortgage. Primarily because the main thing lenders want to know is whether you can handle the ongoing expenses required to maintain the house. Lenders will, however, look to see if you're delinquent on any federal debt. Question 9. The 5th and 14th Amendments of the U.S. Constitution permit the government to exercise its power of eminent domain. Eminent domain is commonly used for a. Infrastructure b. Property tax deflation c. Financing loans, mortgage d. Development of privately owned property Answer A. Eminent domain is a term used to describe the right of the government to take over privately owned real estate, usually despite the owner's wishes. This often happens for land that is required for infrastructure like highways, major pipelines, railroads, etc. The 5th and 14th Amendments of the U.S. Constitution permit the government to exercise its power of eminent domain. Question 10. Often required for mortgage, property insurance for a home is commonly called A. Ownership insurance B. Homeowner's insurance C. Property tax D. Property Tax Insurance Answer B. Most loans require some form of homeowner's insurance. Homeowner's insurance is property insurance that covers losses and damages. They cover an individual's house and assets in the home. It may also provide liability coverage against accidents in the home or on the property. Question 11. Joss agrees to represent Susan in the sale of her home. The listing contract states that Joss will receive a fee of $15,000 from Susan at closing, regardless of the sales price. 
Is this a legal and valid form of compensation? A. No, flat fees are illegal. B. No, the fee has to be given before closing; otherwise, it's voided. C. Yes, since the fee is lower than the United States regulated minimum, it is legal. D. Yes, compensation can be determined in different ways as long as the seller and broker agree. Answer D. Compensation is negotiated between the broker and the seller and may be transferred and distributed in many ways, as long as the seller and broker agree compensation, no matter how much, when, or in any avenue is legal. Question twelve: The amount borrowed is called the a interest amount, b principal amount. C escrow amount. D origin amount. Answer B. The amount owned is called the principal, and the price of borrowing the money is called the interest. Question thirteen: The owner of a condominium has the use of many facilities there, including a pool. Under the typical condominium arrangement, the facilities are owned by a the corporation in which each of the owners hold stock, b the association of home owners in the condominium. C. Some of the condominium owners in the form of divided interest. D. All the condominium owners in the form of percentage undivided interest. Answer D. Condominium often shortened to condo. Is a type of living space which is similar to an apartment, but which is independently sellable and therefore regarded as real estate, unlike apartments which are leased by their tenants. Condominium units are owned outright. The answer is all the condominium owners in the form of percentage. Undivided interest because all condominium owners legally owned a portion of all the facilities there. Question fourteen: What is the procedure used by a public or private entity with the powers granted to take privately owned real estate? A. Escheat. B. Condemnation. C. Eminent domain. D inverse condemnation. Answer B. Condemnation is the procedure used by a public or private entity with the powers granted from eminent domain to take privately owned real estate. Eminent domain is the right which grants the government to take privately owned land from someone. Why condemnation is the action of taking that land? Question fifteen: If a miner signs a contract to buy real estate, the resulting contract is legally what? A. Valid. B. Invalid. C. Void. D. Voidable. Answer D. There are four main elements of a valid real estate contract. The party must be the legal age of eighteen or older and deemed legally competent. The contract must be legal or hold a legal purpose. A clear and specific consideration must be included in the agreement. The contract must hold mutual consent or be agreed upon by both parties. 
If a minor signs the contract, it is considered voidable. Question 16. When you borrow money to buy real estate, you give the lender a dot 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 against the property, a tax lien, b mortgage lien, c judgment lien, d deed. Answer B. When you borrow money to buy real estate, you give the lender a mortgage lien against the property. A mortgage lien is a voluntary specific lien. In fact, it's the most common type of voluntary real estate lien. Question 17. A buyer was negotiating the purchase of a lot to build a new family house the seller indicated that the land was firm enough to support the construction of a building when, in fact, the seller knew it was not. The contract is A. Voidable by the seller because of the mistake B. Voidable by the buyer because of fraud C. Valid D. Void Answer C. In this case, the contract would be voidable by the buyer because of fraud. Voidable contracts have the necessary elements to be enforceable, so they appear to be valid but can be rejected by one party if the contract is discovered to have any number of defects. Fraud is the act of intentionally deceiving another party for financial or personal gain. Question 18. If a buyer refuses to go ahead with a purchase of property which he has signed of a contract, what usually happens to the earnest money? A. It is kept by the seller. B. It is kept by the buyer. C. It is kept by the escrow company. D. It is split between the escrow company and the seller. Answer A. The seller is usually entitled to keep the earnest money because this is considered forfeiter of the contract. The only way the buyer can back out and get their earnest money back is if something happens with the inspection, appraisal, or they have a contract clause offering that protection. Question 19. A real estate agent advertised a home for $250,000. When a Chinese couple asked the agent for the price of the house, the agent told them the seller wanted $260,000 instead. Under the Federal Fair Housing Act of 1968, such a statement is a. Legal because the Chinese family still has an opportunity to buy the house. B. Legal because the representation was made by the agent, not directly owner. C. Illegal because the terms of the potential sale were changed for the Chinese couple. D. Illegal because the difference in the offering price and the quoted price was greater than 10%. Answer C. The Fair Housing Act is a law that prohibits discrimination in the buying, selling, renting, or financing of housing. These laws prohibit discrimination based on race, religion, color, sex, disability, children, nationality, and more. Changing terms of a sale because someone is Chinese is clearly illegal and a violation of the Fair Housing Act. 
Question twenty: Holding earnest money without depositing it is what? A always illegal. B legal with written authority. C legal with verbal authority. D legal if held by a broker. Answer B. Holding earnest money is only legal with written authorization, and even then, it's best to deposit it as soon as possible. Having verbal authority is not good enough, and in many states, it's considered illegal. Question twenty one. A lender agrees to release the first borrower from all financial obligations and let the second buyer be responsible for the repayment of the debt. What is this an example of? A. An option. B. A novation. C. An addendum. D. An amendment. Answer B. Novation is the procedure in which an original contract is terminated and replaced with a new one. The legal process of novation makes it possible to transfer all contract benefits and liabilities from previous parties to a set of new ones. In plain terms. It's a simple way to replace an old contract with a new one while maintaining most or all of its original properties. Question twenty-two: A tenant rented an apartment, signing a sixteen-month lease. After the lease expired, the tenant paid one month's rent and got a receipt. What kind of type of lease does the tenant have? A. Gross lease. B. Proprietary lease. C. Tenancy at will. D. Tenancy at sufferance. Answer C. Estate at will is another name for a tenancy at will. A tenancy at will is generally beneficial to both tenants and owners, who may wish to have the flexibility to change rental situations easily and without breaking a contract. This type of tenancy does not specify its duration or the exchange of payment and can be terminated at any time. These tenancies are sometimes called month. To month, as there is no formal contract specifying the length of time during which the tenancy will take place. Question twenty three. CRV stands for Certificate of Reasonable Value and is issued by who? A. Fannie Mae. B. Federal Mortgage Association. C. Federal Housing Administration. D. The Department of Veterans Affairs. Answer D. Once the appraisal has been performed on a property being bought with a VA loan, the Department of Veterans Affairs (VA) issues a certificate of reasonable value. A certificate of real estate value documents the price at which a property was sold, as well as many unique terms that were added to the transaction prior to its completion. Question twenty-four: What is it called when parties have fully performed the terms of a contract? A. Executory. B. Executed. C. Finalized. D. Closed. Answer B. When contracting parties have signed a contract 
and both parties have done all they promised to do. It is called an executed contract or executed agreement. Question 25. Find the annual GRM, a nine-unit building in Cleveland, Ohio, with an asking price of $500,000 and cross annual rents of $75,000. A. 5.66 B. 6 C. 6.66 D. 7.66 Answer C. Gross rent multiplier is the ratio of the price of a real estate investment to its annual rental income before accounting for expenses such as property taxes, insurance, and utilities. More specifically, it's a measure of the value of an investment property that is obtained by dividing the property sale price by its gross annual rental income. The math looks like this. Gross rent multiplier, property price, gross rental income. So in our case, it would be 500,000 per 75,000, which equals 6.66. Question 26. Joint tenants with a right of survivorship means A. Co-owners have unequal interest in a property. B. If one owner dies, that owner's family has an interest in the property and can absorb it. C. If one owner dies, the other owner must sell his half and they divide the interest among themselves. D. If one owner dies, that owner's interest in the property will pass to the surviving owner or owners. Teen.